facing the burn trap. What is up, you awesome like, kissers? This is reaction guys. Today we're reacting to an undeniably like, canon finest for this timeline part. Brought to you by the ultimate space guys. Don't like this. Comment down below. Let's get into this bot video. So, uh, so uh, following video is a community comment to check this out. Another finest for this timeline video. That's just a theory, a game theory. Oh, he watched a video. Hey, hey, you. Hey, you. Hey. You look like you're interested in some FNAF lore. Kinda. Uh, Sick of all the speculation. Thought it was a little quiet. Do you want something that's undeniably canon? Undeniably canon. Oh. Well, that's too bad. I'm telling you anyway. I'm excited to see where this goes, to be honest. I was like rubbing his shoulder like Oh, and it's by someone else as well? Oh, okay. January, to be exact. Local January? nobodies Henry Emily and William Afton were walking down the streets of Hurricane Utah when suddenly they noticed that not once in their life they Hydratil? ever caught a glimpse of a yellow grizzly bear. It was then that fates were sealed, and they knew that they must fulfill their destiny. Oh, God. Henry and William the were something of robotics enthusiasts, the so they finally used William. their untapped potential the to create robot. the most realistic animatronic What's bear imaginable. Neck, On their first attempt, they made a decrepit, muddy yellow bear with giant teeth and claws. Oh, this wasn't realistic. What? William, however, oh, remembered that in the trunk of his car rested a cluster of discs that could emit audio frequencies that would fool people into seeing real oh, bears. What? They slapped those bad boys on the same I took and the, uh, they took the form of the beautiful golden grizzly, who they then okay. named Ferdinand von Bernard. Oh, yeah, Not only did he look the part, he had a voice for anybody, but the mind altering audio accidentally gave him sent enhancing cosmic power beyond yeah, human oh, understanding. Oh, this God. was very <laughs> dangerous, but the partners in furry shenanigans were not swayed. That is, until the entire town evacuated at the sight of this golden beast. What, Turns what's that, out that people are scared of loose bears. No, Who would have thunk it? Did I just see Scott of course, this fear wasn't been... for nothing. Yeah, Ferdinand was caught dining on a local say, restaurant owner, and he fled from the crime scene before law enforcement could get to him. Oh. William and Henry wow. realized they had been a slight bit overzealous with their first creation. Good thing is, literally nobody knew or cared who they were, so they got away with this wow. scot-free. Later that month, hey, they I designed an animatronic simply based on Ferdinand's likeness. This character was quite a downgrade, being both simpler and stupider. <laughs> this didn't matter to the duo, though, as they loved the <laughs> creation. And with that, Why does he look like that? was born. Oh, God. At first, they had no <laughs> idea. It's so horrifying. So they opted for the dump. Red he was bear, truly bear. a diamond in the rough. Hurricane dump. Amazingly, this attempt at entertainment was amusing enough to the citizens of Hurricane that they gave William and Henry enough money to afford a recently vacated dining Pop space. Pop a third. Fire. It's, it's like a fan of two. Unfortunately, the oh, animatronic yeah. was extremely poorly eaten. designed, and their attempts at granting him artificial intelligence quickly turned sour. On February 31st, 1983, his first performance on stage in front of children prompted him to spontaneously combust from a nervous uh -huh. breakdown. Oh, William what? and Henry, heartbroken oh, at this tragic event, cracked down to ensure this would never happen there again. You go. Yeah, this also no prompted Donald William Russ. to threaten the United States government, and they met his demands oh. to strike Hell! February 31st. William have to demand after that, Joe Biden to make a an something with no flaws. <laughs> what the heck? But then they made spring lock suits. Oh lord. In an attempt to both ease the animatronic's nerves and not allow them their legally required breaks, Henry and William created mechanisms that could lock the endoskeleton parts to the inner edges of the suit for a person to climb inside and cover for the character. For extra safety precautions, they created a partner for the new Fredbear 2.0 to ease his nerves. Spring Bonnie. Uh, Spring Bonnie. For some reason, the best name they came up with for Fredbear's partner was Spring Bonnie. William was insistent on this name, and Henry felt too threatened to argue against it. Where the safety precautions ended, however, was the fact that the spring locks holding the endoskeleton pieces away from the person's vital organs were made out of paper clips, I love it. and the lightest sneeze could set them off. Hey, truly brilliant so inventors. Extremely. Those two. Yeah. The dynamic duo had now created the Wright a death machine. So proud of you. William was the only one who had the nerve to actually test the spring lock suit, and it turned out he enjoyed dancing around as a yellow rabbit a little too much. Henry was unbothered by this, though, as William was still perfectly capable of handling their finances in character. A few months had gone by, and Fredbear's family <laughs> diner was an absolute success. Prize Not only were Fredbear and Spring Bonnie suit. beloved by the now enlightened, Why is the villager well, talking about it? Utah, William even managed to lock in deal with a low-budget animation studio in order to make a cartoon called Fredbear and Friends. The one downside, though, was the studio needed more characters and they refused any more yellow ones. Wait, Out of all places, Leopold, Theodore, Mirabella, and Foxy all created. Foxy no, stayed the same. Mirabella's not yellow, she's Xanthophil. You're just seeing What? Oh. Surely these blights to everything William and Henry stood for would never see the light of day in any other context. 
William and Henry were at their peak, and William finally regained custody of his children. However, one of his sons, okay. whose name has been stricken from the record, waltzed into the back room right, of Fred Bears really and saw Fred Bears name, smoking a cigar. Fred Bears' nightmares. Once about his respiratory Fred health was dead. truly traumatizing to uh, yeah. the child. In a panic, <laughs> right. the child started to run out the door, but accidentally tripped over the foot of Spring Bottom. Wait, 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 wait! Unbeknownst to him. The animatronic was being worn by Harold the janitor, and this collision was oh. enough to snap open the flimsy spring locks and then pale Harold every happened. which way. Oh. God, look at Harold's Harold spirit! Soul, heartbroken by his untimely demise and his boss's backup fursuit, transformed into his pure agony, and he became a shadow creature. He gave himself a really That's cool like, name, isn't that, but unfortunately um, he never learned how shadow to Shadow Bonnie's so name in the like actual files too. Shockingly <laughs> okay with witnessing this occur, the child went home and invited his older brother, Michael, to play a game of Uno with him. However, there was foul play. Oh, God. This child was actually just a terrible human being and slid extra cards into the deck, causing Michael to My draw God, a he really is a murderer! Enraged, Michael threw on a foxy mask and started screeching at the child. The child, annoyed by his behavior, decided to humor Mike until he got bored of doing this and pretended to sob 24-7. <laughs> maybe, just maybe, this would guilt trip him. However, Michael was oh, far more resilient than God, the child anticipated, is, and this no. behavior kept going for a whole week. The child, craving literally anything else to do with his time, walked into Fredbear's again in an attempt to face his fears before getting cornered by Trevor the Cashier wearing Trevor Fredbear's the cashier. Suit. The child saw the reasoning for this, as Trevor was holding a gnat for a mediocre hey, dentist's Trevor. office in his hand. <laughs> yeah. So the child deliberately romance. ran into oh, Trevor God. to set off the spring locks oh, in his again? suit. Oh, Trevor's God. spirit, a uh, bit relieved by the matter in all honesty, turned into a more <laughs> chill shadow creature that just kind of walked around convincing people to join his conga line. The child returned oh, okay. home completely that's, okay that's with the fact good, that he just I killed guess. a man and told his Fredbear plushie <laughs> everything he did. Oh my... Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Next day, Michael and his Uno buddies How barged into the child's room is. to see oh, no. Fredbear no, buddies. Birthday. The child okay. was still the committed to the crying act, but this was a bad idea as it just made them come up with the idea of shoving him in Fredbear's mouth. So, uh, that's exactly what they did. They mockingly told the child to give Fredbear a big kiss, which the animatronic took immediate notice of. This was a very oh. dangerous situation for his career, so without thinking, Fredbear clamped down his jaw on the child's skull. <laughs> this terrified Michael and his friends for about five seconds, until the child hopped out of it on his game. Huh? He's supposed to be dead! The animatronic's rubber teeth, great safety feature. The child was livid and threatened to use a drop again. Mike didn't really know what this meant, but it sounded scary enough for his buddy Jeremy Fitzgerald II to oh, knock the child oh, and God. the child. Oh, God! Oh, God! This was Michael Moore. So he rushed the child to the hospital oh my and was diagnosed God. with a mild concussion. When the child awoke, he looked at Michael and told him that he never existed. When Michael asked what that was supposed to mean, the child fused with him and turned him a little bit paler. This was just a very bad day for Michael. When he went to tell William about it, William had no clue what he meant by little brother. He told Mike to stop making up stories, trash that disrespectful mask, and what? take up engineering. This sounded good enough for him. So <laughs> take up engineering. Wait, he just let it go easily? Out, the employees at Fredbear's called the police uh, because Harold and Trevor's bodies were just laying on the floor and nobody cared to do anything about yeah, it. Yeah, it, right it's then. some kind of body so hatches. Oh was God. shut down Whack and the, the news kid. media blamed it on the light of 83 in order to abruptly end Fredbear's <laughs> career. They were just Maybe. jealous. William and Henry were back to square one because of the abundant <laughs> controversy and investigations. They laid low for a couple of years. You'll but never in 1989, the they again. finally opened a Is that the orange man next to With the amount of money they had earned from Fred Bears, they were luckily capable of buying out a new Who's restaurant like space with ease. Unfortunately, <laughs> Fred Bear was, was publicly executed two years prior. So William and Henry did the unthinkable. <laughs> they made animatronics of the cartoon characters they had made out of reluctant necessity. <laughs> Leopold was their immediate decision for the new mascot. Leopold. As he was actually a bear. He wasn't golden, but he Our new do. face, Leopold. That Leopold. name didn't exactly resonate with the public, so after five seconds of brainstorming, they renamed him Freddy, Freddy Fazbear. Yeah. The initial plan Leopold. was for him to be partnered with Spring Bonnie, but William refused to work with any type of grizzly that wasn't golden. So, Henry opted to rebrand Theodore to simply Bonnie, and that worked Bonnie. well enough. However, making these two characters so derivative of their superior counterparts worried Henry and William, as the public could possibly see through their ruse. So, they added another character to the band to distract Chica, people. Chica. Mirabella. No. Given the fact that she didn't have overtly feminine characteristics, though, Henry and William okay. renamed her Chica to make sure any Spanish With speakers Chica knew faces. she was a girl. <laughs> it was one last cartoon uh, character they could use, Foxy uh, yes, the Foxy. This was a gimmick that the Fred wow, so cool. show added to drive up ratings. 
Henry was fine with the concept, but William hated it. For the time being, William the partners settled on pleased. shoving him in the corner of the building, far Dang. away from the three they actually tolerated. After Dang. opening the location, however, the two quickly realized that children didn't actually care about the three stage performers. Something Oof. about theming being more interesting. As more and more children flocked around Foxy's Pirate Cove, William immediately ran up and kicked the poor animatronic oh. in the kneecaps. Oh. This Jeez. should have been for the time being. That's how it broke broke his leg. After closing to ensure oh it would stay that way. Somehow oh this God. didn't scare Wait, anyone away, and everyone just immediately piled back happens, over to watch so? Freddy sing about bullfighting. Henry and William okay, were then. truly living the life. They <laughs> lost their most animals, <laughs> sure, you. but they were yeah, still yeah, happy. Cool that, that is, yeah. until one <laughs> fateful day. Hey, can I borrow five dollars? Yeah, sure. Well, not actually this oh. specific day. It was two days oh. after this that things fell to pieces. Oh. William, after a long day of work, okay. was extremely <laughs> hungry. You may be wondering why he didn't just eat dinner at Freddy's, but truth yeah. be told, he hated the pizza there. They blew all their Doesn't budget everybody. on good tablecloths. So, instead, <laughs> he opted to drive down opposite? to a local rundown Carl's Juniors. Jr. on that <clears throat> fateful rainy Tuesday night. Carl's Jr. Oh, Hello, right. I'd like an original Angus burger and a large Coca-Cola. Angus burger. $5, please. This was the moment. I, bro, I he pulled out a 20! Well, if he goes to kill dollars. people because he had a 20, I'm, I'm up to that. Henry, Henry and spent one mile over the speed limit and pulled up at Freddy's to enact revenge on Henry. However, by a chance, Henry's daughter Charlie was locked out of the building. William, attempting to help her back in, looked at her in the eyes trying to explain his plight. However, with the rage in his heart at that very moment, his mere stare was a death sentence. Charlie flopped over uh, immediately. Oh! William, panicking over his murder, oh threw her in the alley next to the restaurant That's and so drove off so before terrible. anyone could see what had happened. Oh, After right. this, the restaurant's security oh, puppet, designed to keep track of the so children's assignments, walked Undeniably out of the building cannon. to find Charlie. When it got to her body, her soul grew an attachment to the character, and she stuck around in hopes a new body would be made so she could fuse with it. You'd expect for this to be the end, but the sudden realization of his true power gave William an idea. Not, we still With his have instantaneous like 16 death minutes stare, he could quickly and quietly send a horrible the message to Henry. Death he circled stare. back around to Freddy's and made a beeline toward the safe room that contained the retired Springlock suit. Uh -oh. He quickly equipped his spring bonnie suit and darted around the restaurant telling kids that their dead dogs were alive in the safe room oh. with man Jenkins. <laughs> oh None of them actually God. had dogs, but they all assumed that they'd managed to get a free one anyway. Of course, what? they realized very quickly that they were conned. William waltzed into the safe room with five total so children hard. inside, but oh, before he could do anything, the child named it. Cassidy kicked him in the shin so oh. hard it knocked the pink out of him. <laughs> Luckily, he duct taped the spring locks to the edges of his suit so they couldn't go off, okay, but that's he was smart. still made livid by this attempt on his life, <laughs> Oh no, he the stared down each him. one and took them out. Oh. William wondered if perhaps he had like gone Medusa overboard with his evil five deeds, and figured that yeah, five did. children for five dollars was a reasonable trade-off. Yeah, As a disclaimer to all of you at home, murder is bad. Meanwhile, a drunk man named yeah, Dave Miller had just been turned away from juniors and drove home. He was a terrible father and insisted on invading his son's privacy for the heinous act of the boy. Locking his door, the boy, whose name was Andrew, broke his window and left the house. Turns out, Trevor the cashier, at this point dubbing himself Shadow Freddy, convinced Andrew to participate in his conga line to Freddy's. Unfortunately, Shadow Freddy's favorite spot to wrap up his conga lines was the safe room, and the two just so happened to come Why? as William finished stuffing four of the children into the animatronic suits. Oh, wow. William, He's getting surprised the stare? by a sudden extra child, accidentally gave him the death stare, and now he was left with an extra body to stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and to make so more convenient, the there weren't any more characters to pick from. This, however, is when he realized that he could just stuff both Cassidy and and Andrew went to the Fredbear suit. Okay. Uh, William knew nobody actually wore the thing, so he was certain it would go completely unnoticed. After this, he left the building like nothing happened, and drove home to sleep in his safe and comfy spring bonnie pajama suit. It was getting to be an obsession. <laughs> After this point, hey, Henry was very obviously not. devastated. Yeah, However, he had no idea who actually did it. The cameras were broken, and the only oh, accusations right. were that someone okay, did it while in a Wait, mascot what? costume. They're interrogating Shadow Freddy. Shadow Freddy. Oh, Shadow Freddy? Like oh, gosh. oh no, to no Pop goes. <laughs> Fortunately, Freddy's didn't get shut down for this, really? and Henry attempted to keep things going for a while. William had sent him a letter saying he was off on vacation for the Bruh. time, so Henry was left to handle finances on his lonesome. But uh, six dollars is change. People rapidly started losing interest at Freddy's. The animatronic smelled horrible, and everyone finally noticed just how bad the pizza tasted. <laughs> so by year's end, the restaurant shut down. Henry uh, decided to take a break from it. Maybe be a part two of this. I love this video so much. Realized he could seize this opportunity and make a pizzeria with complete creative control. His daughter, Elizabeth, served as the perfect muse, and he proceeded to make an animatronic that looked nothing like her. He named it Circus Baby. Don't ask why, it's not elaborated on. 
However, after yeah. telling Elizabeth all about this animatronic, she suddenly got the idea to use Baby for a different purpose than simple entertainment. Uh -oh. William Remnant. had recently noticed the animatronics from the closed Freddy's location acting strange, and upon further investigation, <laughs> he discovered Bonnie a substance that he head. called Remnant. His new idea entailed having Baby and a new set of animatronics themed after her work together in order to collect more remnants and children. So, he made Funtime Freddy and Bon Bon for easy marketing appeal. Then, he finally remade Foxy in his own vision, stripping all of that filthy pirate gimmick from him and making him a lovely coat of white and pink. Funtime Foxy was superior in every way, and his lack of originality meant that nobody would prefer her over the characters William actually wanted people to like. Finally, Jeez. William made a character named Ballora. This one wasn't made for murder purposes so much as it was made out of contempt. For who? His ex-wife, Eleanor Schmidt. He craved to make an <laughs> was that a Smash that Bros. type reveal? Later. She was an accountant, so this was easy. However, upon coming to music. William's house to pick up Elizabeth for a week, I Eleanor saw who he was building. Angered by the fact that this character was better at ballet than her, a woman who never once thought about it until right then, she fused with like Ballora in a fit of rage, and now William was stuck with a robot wife that danced around his workshop every day. But, no <laughs> matter. William secured a building to open this brand new sister location of Freddy's and he took his baby to the world, and progress was going smoothly. He had some test runs of the pizzeria, and let some groups of people come there early for birthday parties. But this plan quickly turned sour as Elizabeth joined a party and ignored his specific demands not to see baby. To William's surprise, children don't listen to you if you say not to play <laughs> with something. Don't see Circus yeah. Baby. As a result, oh, that's that's murder that's equipment activated true. as soon as Elizabeth was alone yeah. with her. William instantly shut down development. Uh, oh my goodness! He was very distraught over this, which maybe he should have considered before trying to murder more children. Yes. Yeah. Despite the local yep. population being completely confused by the sudden turn of the guy events, who William blamed it on gas leaks, had gas and never leaks. spoke of it, and instead went back to Henry for them to start work on a new Freddy's location. For a while, like the they teaser planned on just Scott. fixing up the old animatronics from the previous location and scrubbing them down to fix the odor problem. That. However, William caught sight of Foxy and formed a new hey, idea Foxy. in his head out of pure hatred. He I told Henry his really idea for the new design philosophy of the animatronics he had in mind. He introduced a newfangled plastic finish, flashy makeup, and to top it all off, William unleashed his newfound obsession with prefixes and dubbed them toy animatronics. In order to further justify this decision, he also proposed bringing back the security puppet character as just a normal Mary Jane. Security puppet, but cooler. The hero after 87, but cooler. Balloon boy. Oh, oh, no! no! William went straight to no. explaining to Henry why Foxy needed to be white and pink. <laughs> and with that, the new face of Freddy's was underway. The location opened in 1987 with a lot of good press, and people were flocking to it. Why did they put so much trust in this new location? Simple. Henry and William advertised that there would no longer be terrible pizza. This is because they got rid of the kitchen. This restaurant had no food. You'd think this would be a problem, but kids really like to go there for the characters alone. And my characters, Pack and Cow, as even despite William every last effort of making Foxy relevant, the kids now flocked to Toy Foxy's Kid's Cove to tear him apart and put her back together. They thought they could make him look better, but without technical experience, she looked less like a pirate and more like a metal tumbleweed. <laughs> William had now found a new rage spurred by Foxy's mere existence, and so he enacted a second missing children's incident My for Lord. the restaurant's success. This time, however, Henry had been paying attention. He saw the camera recordings of Spring uh -oh. Bonnie luring children to the safe room and realized that William was behind one this of the them. entire time. He immediately you fired William fire and told him to never show his face the again. The William bro. realized that this was a big problem. Henry may have let him off easy by not calling the authorities, but if anyone else checked anything, he'd be caught for sure. Oh, yeah. So, after ruffling through so old newspapers about his murders to see if he liked any of the parents' Local names, bum. he stole the name and Dave Miller loser. and applied for a job as a night guard at the location. Yeah, totally not position, William Afton. He tampered with the facial recognition scanners they implemented in the animatronics and wiped the camera recordings clean. On top of this, he beat up all of the old animatronics just to put them in their place after seeing Freddy walk around. He even tore off Bonnie's face for not uh. being deserving of the mantle he once bore. Bonnie's possessed by little Jeremy Fitzgerald was uh, merely a prophecy of more face trauma to come for that bloodline. <laughs> After getting done with that, William could have sworn the he saw the puppet floating around whispering to everything it could see. This made him wonder if this was actually <laughs> Charlie, but he didn't care enough to check, so he left it alone. The new set wow. of children, though? William hadn't bothered actually stuffing them anywhere, so the puppet guided them to select new vessels of their own. Instead of individual characters like it was expected, 
expecting now. All of them voluntarily possessed Balloon Boy just because it was mildly amusing. William, no. still presenting his day, tried to maintain a job Imagine as a day shift Balloon guard Boy's just possessed by quickly five fired for having bad vibes. Also, he kept going <laughs> into the vibes. workshop service room to kick the old Foxy <laughs> animatronic machines. Why Foxy, now that the mount guard what position do you do? was open, one of Michael Afton's old Uno buddies applied for the job. Jeremy Fitzgerald the second. He was actually pretty decent at it, but it got extremely stressful because Balloon Boy staged a coup against him with the other revolution. So, once the week was over, he transferred over to the day shift position. Balloon Boy wasn't going to let Jeremy get away free though, and proceeded to publicly attack him and bite out his frontal lobe. Wow. That face trauma prophecy came true quickly. But hey, don't worry, it grew back <laughs> within a month. But this incident, dubbed the That's Bite of 87, was enough to finally get the establishment closed. On the night after this attack, they needed a guard to make sure Balloon Boy didn't escape. Instead of behaving though, <laughs> local menace Fritz Smith tampered with all the animals extremely aggressive just because he thought it'd be fun. Company higher-ups didn't appreciate this and quickly took care of the problem. Thus, 1987 hey, ended with another Holy location shit. shut down abruptly. Henry scrapped all the toy animatronics after this, except for Toy Freddy and the going puppet. On here, huh? Turns out Toy Maybe Freddy was already stop. retiring, as he really wanted to become a gamer. His oh, endeavors were successful, and he led a happy <laughs> life. The puppet now all right, just for him. vanished. Henry, spooked by the idea okay. of a sock monkey with a clown mask coming back to haunt him, started making blueprints for a counterattack if that day ever came. Lefty. Now, Henry Righty. had his sights set Lefty. on repairing and reusing the old animatronics for one last attempt at the pizzeria business without Lefty. William in his way. However, this plan was easier said than done. Henry, with all of his financial incompetence, had next to no funds to enact no the free money. So he briefly attempted a public fund to try and get money. After a day of trying, he gave up with his healthy Henry was broke, sure, but he had some powerful resolve. So, he decided to steal back the building he and William used in 1985 to recycle for his new pizzeria. Despite this being very much illegal, nobody actually wanted to use the building given its history, so the city decided not to bother Henry when he claimed it back as his. <laughs> being a one-man show, Henry had to take his sweet Dave time or William. Place. But, after about a year, he managed to open it back up with somewhat new animatronics. And, to his surprise, he was actually moderately successful. Due to a dwindling bear population in Utah, there was growing demand to see one in person. And the populace reluctantly decided that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was their best shot at doing so. Unfortunately, the working conditions were very much terrible. The most loyal employee of Fazbear Entertainment, only known by his co-workers as Phone Guy, was assassinated by the animatronics during his final week of working the night shift Phone Guy was suspiciously purple. Yes, that is exactly what a helpful guide on how to not get assassinated right before getting assassinated. Henry yeah. was not ready to let this casualty of his negligence ruin things for him. Phone so he just covered up out. Phone Guy's death and business went as usual after. <laughs> William was still normal unemployed phone. and bored, decided now was a good time to take revenge on Henry. Oh, for no reason because yeah. he was bored He realized he still had an entire so stockpile canon. of animatronics that man, he forgot to use. With the power of legal loopholes, he managed Bear. to kickstart Does Circus Baby's Freddy internet. Freddy Fuzzballs? For suspiciously low oh, prices, Puzz the average family could have a giant what chrome animatronic bear. shipped to their doorstep to throw parties for their children. The what could go wrong? Well, baby's eyes were green. For a moment, William thought he just misremembered her eye color, but yeah. then she started talking to him about very personal matters and he realized Elizabeth had possessed her. Uh. Instead of doing anything immediate to solve this problem, he locked her in the rental facility and wrote a note on the fridge to take care of it later. After a few Daughter more years, dead, Michael Lapton finally graduated engineering school and came back home. William was delighted by his son's return, as he was conveniently useful for his newest plot against Henry. However, he wanted Michael to be fully prepared for what was to come. So, AI William testing, locked Mike into a crude AI testing house nightmare chamber. Nightmare chamber. It's an friends. AI testing. In this fake Definitely house, an AI William testing. had prepared a makeshift animatronics with dangerously high safety hazards to attack Michael so he could learn how to defend himself against the real deal. After roughly a week of watching Mike handle the process, William yeah, noticed something wrong. wrong. Something broke into the fake house. Upon further investigation, he discovered some discarded audio discs lying Oh around. no. It was Ferdinand von Bernard. Der having wandered the wilds of Utah for exactly a <laughs> decade, a he returned to Hurricane to wreak havoc on his creators. Why? He targeted William's favorite, or er, only, son using his unaltered form. But Mike was resilient, and he managed to avoid Ferdinand long enough that he got bored, reapplied his audio discs, and finally wandered away.
Given the unplanned attack on Michael, William ended the testing process and gaslit Mike into believing it was all just a nightmare before changing the subject to getting a job. To ensure that nightmare. Henry wouldn't tell Michael what he knows about his father, William told Mike that he should apply using his mother's maiden name rather than Afton. That way he doesn't draw attention to himself for being related to everyone's favorite former manager, of course. So, Mike Schmidt worked for a whole week at this place. The animatronics tried to assassinate him due to his good looks, or so he assumed. After Mike working Schmidt. an extra night and being applauded by Henry, he was then instructed by William to sabotage Dumb the animatronics using his points. new engineering skills. Why do I need to disable their AI? It builds character. <laughs> and Henry <laughs> still is from five dollars. That's all. Michael not wasn't buying. What about it? So he's he's to do the exact and all in, and bring them all up as a maximum five, setting to challenge himself for the end of his week. But due to the animatronic scent rubbing off on him, Henry fired him for body odor and inadvertently caused a personal grudge. Before leaving, Mike snuck into the back and disabled all of the animatronic systems to spite Henry. Now that the animatronics didn't work, everyone stopped caring about Freddy's again. <laughs> Henry's profits plummeted, and he was ultimately forced to shut the place down by the end of 1993. Really? Again? After hearing really? this news, William was ecstatic. He Bruh. began marketing the Circus Baby Rental Woke Service. Woke up extra early just to hate on Henry for five bucks that he planet. missed out William on. William had needed Freddy's clothes for more reasons than just spite. The Funtime's Remnant collection was not working as frequently as he hoped, and if he wanted to understand the substance at all, he needed more of it quickly. So, he made sure he had free reign to tear apart the animatronics to harvest their remnant and leave. After sneaking into the now abandoned Freddy's, he set up camp in the safe room since the animatronics were programmed not to go in. How to get but then he remembered Michael had completely deactivated them, and they would only move if the souls possessing them were motivated enough to. Luckily, Shadow Freddy suddenly appeared, and William bribed him to start a conga line leading into the safe room so he could Bruh. dismantle all the animatronics. Oh my His God. plan worked flawlessly. In the animatronics' weakened state, William was able to tear them apart using nothing but his bare hands. Really Unfortunately for him, some of the remnants spilled and formed into the visible spirits of the missing children. Terrified that they might be able to kick him in the shins, he ran to his trusted spring body suit and put it back on for the first time since 1987. Feeling empowered despite this accomplishing nothing, William began to laugh at the ghosts. But in his self-indulgent celebration, he failed to realize that the duct tape held back the spring locks had fallen off, and the leaky ceiling proceeded to snap them shut. The ghosts, finding his inconvenience hilarious, faded away for the time being so they could gossip about him elsewhere. While normally being impaled like this would result in immediate death, the spring lock failures these suits cause are painful enough to consistently cause so much agony that life is maintained in some way. While Harold the Janitor got the short end of the stick and became a miserable shadow creature, William was now wearing okay, the stupid rabbit suit. Realizing he wasn't gonna properly die anytime soon, William Afton came up with a new name for his new form. He called himself Springtrap. And with that, we end this chapter of the timeline. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> but what about the this rest was a very interesting I'm part two. I'm drawing it out for suspense. I like it. And this is a lot to cover, but pretend yes. it's only for suspense. It would have been a okay, long video. But what about Ferdinand Ball? Don't worry.